What's the word, y'all? Absolute masterclass by Stephen Curry. There's no way around it. This man just gave them 40 plus point timely bucket after timely bucket with his back against the wall because being down 3 1 is a death sentence. I know in recent history, a team has come back from being down 3 1 in the finals. Historically speaking, statistically speaking, being down 3 1, the series is over. He's in the TD Guard, one of the loudest arenas <laughs> in the history of basketball, and he gave them 40 plus points and, and just, just won them this game. I don't want to say single handedly because, like, Wiggins really stepped up Kevon Looney's really good Clay Thompson had a couple timely baskets and got some big steals down the stretch but bro this man was amazing you know what make all of this crazy I, I, I'm still seeing a ton of slander on the timeline the game just wrapped up 15 minutes ago and I, I was just strolling I'm still seeing slander and I just don't I don't understand and, and if you hate the Warriors slash Steph Curry that's your own prerogative I know they've been dominate, dominating the league for this, six out of the last eight years but I cannot be someone that loves the game of basketball and see a performance like this and hate it. You know what I'm saying? I'm convinced a lot of y'all watching this series, not even basketball fans. This man gave you an all time performance. This is Steph Curry's best finals performance of all time. The only game that kind of rivals it a little bit, it was like, um, and this is off the top of my head. I ain't even looked this up. Um, because he might have had another performance in the but like the stake, the stakes make this better. They they haven't had their back against the wall in many final series. You know what I'm saying? They were the favorite and majority of the final series they've been in, right? So with them being down. 2-1 on the road and him dropping 40. The only game that came to mind while I was watching this one was after Klay Thompson got injured and after KD got injured against the Raptors. They received the game three or game four. Steph Curry almost gave them 50. And though the Raptors won that game somewhat convincingly, he almost gave them 50 in, in a game where like Iggy was like the second best player. Where Afonso McKinney, I vividly remember Afonso McKinney taking shots in like third, fourth quarters of this game. And Steph Curry almost gave him 50, but he ended up losing. This one, considering the stakes, his best by far when it comes to the NBA Finals. So shout out to him. And listen, I kind of understand. I don't even want to say I understood the slander. But like in, in some of the previous games, he had went cold in the fourth quarter, right? And because of that, people are like, man, he might have had 37 points or 33 points on 50% shooter. But in the fourth quarter, he had, he was 0 for 2. And ah, uh, he's just, that that's what we going to focus on. In this game, there's literally nothing you can say negatively about Steph Curry's performance. He did everything you can imagine him do. And they kept the series alive. 2-2 two -two series going back home. They stole back home court. And this, this, if I'm a Boston Celtics fan, this game bothers me. Not because the series is over, because it's very far from it, and it's a 2-2 series. You know what I'm saying? It's very far from over. But I'm going to read you the last couple possessions for the Boston, or the, yeah, the Boston Celtics with um, five minutes to go. Jalen Brown missed a shot, two-pointer. Jalen Brown missed a, a three-pointer. Tatum missed a three-pointer. Smart missed a three-pointer. Smart missed another three-pointer. Al Horford missed a three-pointer. Al Horford missed another three-pointer. There was a turnover. I'm looking at the play-by-play. -play. Turnover from Jalen Brown, and then Derek White missed a three. It was, I think, a 17-5 run to end this game. And it felt like they were under the pressure. They felt the, the pressure of the Golden State Warriors in this one. This was an extremely winnable game for the Boston Celtics, and they fumbled it down. If, I'm just, this is, a, this is an if again. I'm not picking one way or another. I don't really know. We've seen both sides. We've seen the greatness that could be the Warriors, and we've seen the greatness that we that could be the Boston Celtics. I don't know how the series is going to finish in these last three games, but if they somehow lose this series, I'm looking at these last five minutes in this game where they could have been up 3-1 and being like, damn, they fumbled the title. Again, it's very far away they still got a ton of basketball and I've saw a lot of great things from the Celtics in this game it just so happened in the last five minutes or so everything went down the drain anyway let's talk about these things man let's talk about these things because like I said Steph Curry was amazing um there, there's nothing much more you can you can ask for if you're a Warriors fan maybe you if you're a Warriors fan you ask for a better whistle for Steph Curry just because there were like two to three three pointers that he ended up making um that could have been called foul like me as a neutral fan I was watching this like yeah that was a foul especially the one where Jason Tatum was behind him and on his back and he the <laughs> I don't know how he hit the shot. He hit the shot, right? But if, if obviously MVP goes to Stephen Curry, but some of the role players have stepped up for them is something that we haven't seen a lot in the series. It had been all of Steph Curry, or not all of them, majority of Steph Curry through the first three three games of the series. Today, Wiggins was phenomenal. He got his 17 points. As we know, that's what Wiggins does. Him ending up with 16 rebounds and coming off of a game where they got dominated on the glass. 
is amazing. Kevon Looney did not start this game, and that surprised the hell out of me because game number three, Rob Williams got offensive rebound, offensive rebound. They were getting killed on the glass, and I just kind of assumed that we'd get more of Kevon Looney. Um, we we technically did, yeah. And game number one, uh, game number three, I think he got like 17 total minutes today. He got 28, and he grabbed some big rebounds. He got some offensive rebounds. He had a clutch basket down the stretch off of Draymond Green pass. Draymond Green was terrible today, but if you look at the last three minutes, if you only watch the last three minutes of this game, you'd be like, oh, Draymond Green had a good game. He had a uh, offensive rebound. He had a couple assists down the stretch. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, for for the first uh, 45 minutes, he was completely ass. Um, but yeah, Kevon Looney stepping up, and there was there was two possessions in this game from Gary Payton the second that just just shows me why he deserves more minutes than what he's got. Today he ended up with 10 minutes. I don't think that was enough. Listen, they won the game, so it doesn't really matter. But there was a possession where um on the low block, Jason Tatum was trying to get the ball and kind of kind of take advantage of Gary Payton II because he's got the height advantage. And Gary Payton II just denied, 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 and it ended in a turnover for the Boston Celtics. Just outworking a lot of people on the court, and that is what Gary Payton II does out there. So, I mean, maybe I, I'm not asking him to get 30 minutes per game, because, you know, he has his limitations offensively. But defensively, when you need somebody to get under the skins and you need somebody to play adequate defense or above adequate defense, hell, I had him all defensive, even though he ain't play a lot of minutes because he's that talented of a defender. He brought that today. And then pool. The pool party was a li was open for a little bit. It was a little stretch. We scored like nine straight points for the uh, the Warriors, and they desperately needed that because, if I'm not mistaken, those were part of the mo minutes where Steph Curry was on the bench. And it just feels like, and I don't have the stats to prove this, it feels like when Steph Curry has been on the bench in this series, they have been getting dogged. Um, and, and when you got Jordan Poole coming off the bench and hitting a couple really big shots, that was great. I got to give a lot of credit to Steve Kerr because there was a, po a portion early in the fourth quarter where the Celtics going on a run, and Steve Kerr was like, you know what, we got to get Steph back into the game. And some of the previous games, he was letting Steph just sit over there and letting his normal rotations go, and he knew the circumstances. He knew that if they lost this game, the odds of them winning the series is very low. So he got Steph Curry back into that game, and, well, the, the rest was history. All right, man, let's talk about it. Jason Tatum. An another poor shooting night. His shooting splits in the finals are, um, they're bad. They're bad. Um, and, and the two of their wins, two of their wins came when he was playmaking at a high level. Game number one, he shot poorly, but he had like 11 assists. And then game number three, he shot a little bit better, but the playmaker was still elite and he rarely turned the ball over. Where in this one, his turnovers matches assists and then he also struggled from the field a lot of credit goes to Wiggins again and I think a lot of credit goes to Klay Thompson because I think both of them defensively at least tonight have been pretty damn good um the Boston Celtics best player in this series has been Jalen Brown Jalen Brown's been looking at Draymond Green right in his his damn pupils and saying you cannot stop me and he's been getting basket after basket Draymond Green was like the front runner for defensive player of the year until he got injured and Jalen Brown does not give a damn and he's going at him possession after possession but the other coach star Jason Tatum has to be better if they want to win two of the next three he has to be even if the shot's not falling you got to be better of a playmaker which you've done in the in the two previous wins I tweeted this after or during game number three I do believe that after the series whether they win whether they lose there's gonna come out that Jason Tatum was playing with like a torn labor or a partially torn shoulder or something of that caliber because I do I just I don't he doesn't look 100% to me when he's playing basketball and as a person that has had two torn labrums I know that that shit is uncomfortable now I've never had to play a professional basketball game and play 43 minutes of basketball with the torn labrum but I I know it's super uncomfortable and with a torn labrum for people that don't know it's not one of those injuries that's like a, to a torn ACL where you you have to go actually I've heard stories about people playing sports with torn ACLs it's not one of those injuries where you uh, you automatically have to be done for the season you have to go get that surgery you got to get repaired one of my shoulders I got the surgery to repair it and this shoulder, I just went to physical therapy for it three months, and it repaired itself. So it's one of those injuries where you can have the surgery, you can try to play through it and have the surgery later. And I think that's what the case is for him right now, bro. I think that's what the case is right now. And you have a, a couple better shooting performances from Jason Tatum. Th these boys have, will be unbeatable. But instead, he's like, I don't know if I'm if I'm ranking the most impact or. The most impactful Boston Celtics players this this championship, this four games, is Jalen Brown. I guess Tatum is still two because in two games he has been, he was pretty good playmaker. But like Marcus Smart is very close. You know what I'm saying? It should be when you go into the series. When I was previewing the series, it was Tatum has to be him, and he is him, and that's why I believe that they have a chance here. And so far he he has not been 
the Tatum we have seen for the better half of the regular season and then partially through this playoff run. We haven't got that version of him yet. You know, we were talking about in our pre preview, there's going to be one game where Tatum struggles. And so far, it's been four. You know, str struggles is, is of subjective, but you understand what I'm saying. Tatum is a dude that feels like he go out and get you 40, and he don't look like the guy that can get you 40 right now. I thought Robert Williams was really good again today. Um, he got cooked on that one possession by Steph Curry, and then he got yanked for Al Horford. And I understand Al Horford um, literally like two possessions later held his own against Steph Curry. So I understand why you put him back in the game. But uh, I, I like what Rob Williams gives them offensively because you don't get to the point where it's three after three after three after three. He just gets like that that interior force and you get a lob. Or you get an offensive rebound for a putback or something like that. Um, so I would have loved to see more of him down the stretch, but they haven't really closed much with him for the entirety of this playoff run. So I, I guess I'm asking for something that's not really realistic. Nemanja Bjelica, I don't know how I've gone this whole episode without mentioning his name. I think actually in the, the other game we played really well, I don't think I mentioned his name either. So no disrespect to Nemanja. He was really good today. He was 0 for 2, but he had a couple possessions where he got a, he got a steal on um, – Jalen Brown, and he played some really good defense on Tatum a couple different times in this series. I think you what's crazy is that this is so far throughout the series, it's like the good old battle of better team versus better pl best player, right? I think collectively the Boston Celtics have been the better team, but this man Steph Curry is just on a whole nother level, and they have the better play, the best player in the series. And we've seen two games with the better team won, and we've seen two games with the better player has won. It's it's actually very it's very fun to watch, man. It's it's kind of kind of like some of LeBron's finals appearances. I'm being honest with you, where LeBron goes in as well. I don't even know. Who, I, I actually I do know because I vividly remember 538. 538 had it so that the Boston Celtics had a 87% chance of winning this finals going into it. If, it, if we're strictly going on 538, that makes the Warriors a heavy underdog. So some of the series that LeBron has went into, how the hell are we talking about LeBron, bros, and Cancun right now? Um, some of the series that LeBron went into, he was the underdog because he was going against the better, the better team. But since LeBron is LeBron, he always had a chance. And some of those chances turned into a championship, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of what Steph Curry is going through right now, where he is the best player in the series. But his supporting cast is not nearly as good as the other team's supporting cast. But he's won two games with it. He's won two games with it. Draymond Green hasn't done a goddamn thing this whole series. This whole series, other than the two minutes I mentioned earlier, he hasn't done anything. And yet they have a 2-2 two, 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 uh, series tie right now. And to think at the end of game number three, we were talking about um, Steph Curry potentially hurting his foot. That foot looks fine. <laughs> you feel me? That foot looks looks fine. Um, what changes can the Boston Celtics have for this next game to get them back to winning another one? I think they got, again, limit the turnovers. Majority of the games that they've lost throughout the last when they started to turn up have been because they've been losing the turnover battle and they need a, a really, really good Jason Tatum game. And I don't even, am I asking for too much from that at this point? Feel weird to say, am I asking for too much for Tatum to step it up just a little bit? So they need to limit their turnovers, swing the ball and don't let the lights get too bright because I, vip, I do believe that was the case. Three after three after three after three offensive rebound. We gonna go to another three. Some of the things that has been killing the Warriors this entire series is them getting to the basket. And in that last five or so minutes, they didn't do that at all. So limit your turnovers. Tatum, step it up a little bit more and continue to attack at the basket. And if you're the Warriors, listen, you got you got to hope that Dre shows up eventually. And again, Draymond Green's impact is deeper than the stat line. But even the eye test is saying that Draymond Green is, is looking terrible right now. You hope that Klay Thompson can, can have another performance like he had in game number three. Because even though he hit a timely shot in this one, offensively it wasn't a great game for for clay thompson you know you gotta hope you gotta hope that game six clay thompson comes alive you know i mean maybe you hope for it to happen a little bit earlier than that because you do have a game five at home but you get what i'm saying man so far this series has been great and i understand that before tonight uh three all three of those games were decided by double digits but all of those games were close until we got down to the nitty-gritty and today was even closer which means that the way it's working, uh, next game is going to be a buzzer beater. A game with a buzzer beater. That's just a fact. All right, y'all.